People who are against science usually talk about quantum mechanics, and some way they got a point, because before quantum mechanics people thought that light, for example, was a wave, but then they introduced the concept of photon, which some way is a particle. I'm not going to explain it because this is not a video about quantum mechanics, but in any case it's not exactly the same thing as a wave. And so this begs the question if actually science can be wrong. And what I'm going to explain today is that actually no science is always right. It was right before quantum mechanics, it was right during the discovery of quantum mechanics, and it will always be perfectly right. And here is why. Hello agents and welcome back to Social Complexity, where we discuss about science with a specific focus on our society and why it is the way it is. And we usually use different tools from complex systems, simulations, even video games, a lot of fun stuff, pretty much. So let's get back to the scientific method. And you might already have heard something like the fact that the scientific method is based on induction or inductive reasoning or something like this. So what does it mean? So just imagine that your memory got cancelled, you know nothing, and you have to explore the world and actually figure out how the world functions. At a certain point you notice some smoke and you realize that right beneath the smoke there is a campfire. This happens 5, 10, 20 times and at a certain point you form your belief that actually smoke is always generated by campfire. This is a form of inductive reasoning because you have a series of experiments, of observations, and then from this observation you make your belief. Every time I see some smoke, then there is a campfire. And you are pretty happy with your belief, but then at a certain point you notice someone smoking, and you figure out that actually smoke might also be generated by cigarettes. So what do you do? You just update your belief and you claim that smoke can be generated either by campfires or cigarettes. So some years later you have just broaden your belief and now you know that actually every object burning can generate some smoke. Okay, then we figure out something that maybe we don't like too much about induction. And is the fact that induction is telling us some truth, but we never know if it is exactly the truth. Or at least it's telling us part of the phenomenon, but we don't know if this is all we need to know. Do you really need something burning for having smoke? We don't know. Because actually to really know this, we will need to observe all the smokes of the universe, of the history of the world, and you know, this is not really possible. Okay, then maybe do we have any alternative to induction? And the answer is yes, no, I don't know. For example, we have deductive reasoning, which is super powerful because actually deduction tells you that if your premise is true, then also your conclusion is true. And there are no exceptions to this. But unfortunately, you need to know that your premise is true. And how do you know if your premise is true? You will need something to back up this premise. Something like, for example, inductive reasoning. Because unfortunately, everything we know is based on some kind of induction. Where do you know that floor is not going to disappear while you're walking on it? Induction. Just because every time you're walking, the floor doesn't disappear, it's always there. If you lived in a world where the floor suddenly tends to disappear, you will have another belief. So again, induction. An alternative, you can try to find some kind of source that you really trust, like a person or maybe a book. But this is not really solving the problem, because then how do you know that this person or this book actually is trustworthy. And this is pretty much what happens with religions, like you can choose to trust a book, a religion, it's pretty fine, at least I have no problem with this, but this is not really a demonstration. Okay, then let's go back to science and his inductive method, and is science really trustworthy? And the first thing you need to know about science is that actually science is not just a person going around in the world and testing random stuff, but it's actually about a ton of people testing a lot of different things. And when they have a question, for example, what is generating smoke, they really take this seriously and they run tons of different experiments. Also because scientists really like to outsmart other scientists and say something like, you know, you didn't notice this, I noticed that, I'm smarter than you. So we have this immense amount of people all sharing their knowledge their experience and their experiments. So then this bunch of people figure out that light is a wave, they really believe this, and then a bunch of people like Einstein, Bohr and some, 
they pop up and say like, you know, actually it's not really a wave, but it's more like a particle. So was science wrong? And here we really need to be careful about one thing, because we can have two different interpretation of the same experiments. The first way would be to say every time we run experiments, light is behaving like a wave, thus light is definitely a wave. We are sure about this. The second interpretation instead is a little more complex and says that every time we run the experiments, light behave like a wave, thus we will consider it as a wave. But we are not sure if this is the case. Just we keep this and then if something new pops up, we just consider the new things. Now, both interpretations are pretty cool when everything is working fine, because then you can just take your experience, your knowledge, and you can design all sorts of cool things, like lasers or super lasers. I don't know, whatever you like, which is based on light, lightsabers. Actually, they are supposed to be plasma. Anyway, when you discover something new, with the first interpretation, you have to say something like, oh, we were wrong, actually, sorry. Um, we didn't know about this. Uh, okay, let's give us some time to restructure everything. The second interpretation instead is more flexible because they already knew that they didn't know everything. They knew a lot of stuff, but they were open to new discoveries. They were almost expecting to discover something new because they knew that their knowledge was limited. And let me tell you something here, because people think that when science is updating, it's just throwing everything away. But this is not true. I'm going to explain this better in another video, but we still use classical mechanics. All classical physics is still perfectly working and we still use it. Just in some cases, like when you need to study electrons, you need to use some more specific tools like quantum mechanics. So it's more like science is evolving and is getting more and more precise in all the domains, more than changing completely her belief. So how can science be always right? Just by considering that we don't know everything. Considering that things up to here behave in this specific way, but we don't know what is going to happen in the future. And this is exactly how science can always be right. If you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell button, this is super important. We have a new video every Monday, for example, we have one coming up on why do you want to use classical mechanics even if you have quantum mechanics, which is supposed to be more precise. I've been Dino and don't forget to embrace the complexity of your life.